Theresa, welcome. Thank you for coming around this afternoon. You uh, work for the Bishops' Conference, essentially the bishops of the Catholic Church in England and Wales. And uh, in that work, you lead on the evangelization of peoples, as it's called. That's right. Um, and, you know, you're the, the Catholic Church is, is so involved in Thy Kingdom Come, this 11 days of prayer between Ascension and Pentecost. But when we pray it, what are you expecting? What's in your mind? What, do you, what are you thinking will happen as a result of people praying like this? Oh, maybe I'm a bit ambitious, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping for a fresh, a new Pentecost, if you like. Ah. Nothing less. Um, and it comes from a promise that I made when I was 17. I had watched The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm an East End girl and I don't cry easily. <laughs> but I found myself crying when Aslan died. And I spoke to a friend afterwards and I, I said, so I don't get it. What, you know, like, why did that move me to tears? And she said to me, don't you get it, Teresa? Aslan's Jesus. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'd been a cradle Catholic all my life. I had learned all about Jesus, attended Mass every Sunday, gone to all kinds of things. And my faith was in my head. And in that moment, it dropped into my heart. And I was both frustrated and at the same time exhilarated because I didn't have to be perfect. Mm. Jesus wasn't someone that I was going to seek approval from. He was someone who has saved me from all the stuff I've done wrong in the greatest way that he possibly could. He died for me. But that's not the end of the story. That's the beginning, isn't it? And the beginning is the new life that comes out of that love. And that's what, when we pray thy kingdom come, it's a chance for us, for us to come outside of our own little bubbles of looking at my world, my kingdom, my will, what I want to do, and to say to God, you know what? I think I can trust you more than I can trust myself. So let me pray thy kingdom come. That's an extraordinary story. It's actually a beautiful story. Um, <clears throat> what can we do to prepare to pray that prayer. Because if, you know, if God's at work, do you, I mean, you've talked about the land, the witch and the wardrobe, there's this fabulous scene, isn't there, when, in, when the children are traveling through Narnia and the thaw begins, spring is on the way, and um, uh, the snow begins to go. And that tells people that something's happening, Aslan's coming. So we're praying thy kingdom come. What do we do to prepare? I think it's maybe to look for those signs of hope, like the thaw. You know, in that story, for, for ages, people had lived in the snow and they knew nothing else. They'd heard of something else. And we've heard of something else, whether we're people of faith or, or just people who hope for something better. And when we prepare to pray, it's to start to open our imaginations to the possibility that God can be on the move in our lives. And I mean, one of the things I found very striking is that people from all sorts of churches pray together mm. on this. It's, you know, we don't all go into, as you said, we don't all go into our own little bubble. It seems that this time of prayer is one that brings the church together. Do you think that makes a difference to what God does. Oh, hugely. I mean, there is the physical being together, but also the being together in solidarity with each other wherever we are. Last year I prayed, oh, thy kingdom come, but I was in Rome at the time and was using a podcast to help me to pray through, through the novena. So I was physically on my own, but I wasn't on my own because I knew people all over the world was praying. But it's also a little bit difficult to say, I'm definitely going to pray for 11 days of prayer, particularly if that kind of prayer is not our regular thing. So we can pray in relays, or we can come together and encourage each other to pray. You know, if I choose to pray on the Ascension, and then I pass the baton on to my friend and say to pray the next day, we're together praying thy kingdom come. So don't get too tied up with beating yourself up because it's a struggle, do it every day. Share take part, but above all, expect to see 
Pentecost coming afresh. I hope so. Teresa, one other thing that's just on my mind. You came along to the launch of Thy Kingdom Come and you just taken on your current job, hadn't you? That's right. And you were thinking, what am I going to do? And just tell me what happened. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes you're just sent along to stuff. And it was one of those moments for me um, in this beautiful place here in Lambeth Palace. And I was thinking, well, what am I doing representing the Catholic Church at this event? <laughs> and I just shot up a little prayer to the Lord in that moment, sat at the table, not knowing anyone. And I said, Lord, I feel like I'm being asked to make bricks without straw. How and where do I start? And then the event started and your good self arrived. And the first thing you said was, have you ever felt like you're being asked to make bricks without straw? And then you went on to describe what thy kingdom come was about. And I knew in that moment that this was the Holy Spirit answering the prayer I had just made. That is fantastic. And it's, I, I was not consciously, you know, I wasn't sort of being hyper spiritual, it's just, the words that came out and God somehow put them all together. That's and that's right. why we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.